Out of the thousands of paintings produced since the dawn of humanity, which one is the most disturbing? Well, judging by the amount of people asking me to make a video on Saturn devouring his son, I'd have to say that it might win this title. Nerdwriter agrees, and perhaps their video on Saturn devouring his son influenced your opinion. It certainly influenced mine. The video titled The Most Disturbing Painting is one of the best videos on art history on YouTube. It's the video that inspired the production behind some of my very first videos. But I'll still give my interpretation of this painting. It's a bit different and I hope you find it compelling. The reason why I'm making this video is because it was requested so many times and I think my interpretation of this painting is different enough to make it interesting. So if you watched Nerdwriter's video, you know a bit about the origin of this painting, how it was found alongside 13 other paintings on the walls of the Quinta del Sordo, or the Deaf Man's Villa. These paintings will be known as the Black Paintings. You also know that this villa was named after a previous owner who was deaf, but that Goya himself also suffered from many illnesses one of them making him deaf. A very ill and fragile Goya would move into the villa at the age of 72. Self-portrait with Dr. Arrieta is a great testament to the pain Goya endured. Under it, you can read Goya in gratitude to his friend Arrieta for the compassion and care with which he saved his life during the acute and dangerous illness he suffered towards the end of the year 1819 in his 73rd year. He painted it in 1820. During his life, Goya hadn't only suffered from these life-threatening illnesses, but he already struggled with the decadency of an underdeveloped Spain, a Spain which refused to accept the ideas of the Enlightenment, a Spain which let its reason sleep and saw monsters. One thing Goya was especially critical of was the popular belief in witches. In the 1800s, his contemporaries would still believe in witches, and Goya made many paintings mocking the very idea of their belief. His series Los Caprichos, which I made a video about, is full of etchings criticizing Spanish society, and more specifically, absurd popular beliefs. However, from 1807 to 1814, Goya saw the atrocities of the Peninsular War, the invasion of Spain by French forces. He made another series of etchings criticizing the brutality of war, and this criticism was epitomized in his masterpiece, The 3rd of May 1808, which I also made a video about. All these events, combined with his various illnesses, will severely affect Goya both physically and mentally. The unfortunate degradation of his state of mind would lead to these extremely expressive and terrifying images. So back to Saturn devouring his son and the other 13 black paintings. It's hard to know what these paintings mean and represent as they were found without a description or a title to orient us. But here's my interpretation of it. Goya in the Quinta del Sordo saw death approaching. He knew he didn't have long. These paintings reek of death not only because of the way they're painted or because of their color palette, but because Goya, while painting them, had death in the back of his mind. Knowing his life was coming to an end, he went back to the important moments in his life with perhaps an emphasis on the traumatic ones. For example, in The Witch's Sabbath, probably the creepiest black painting, Goya is depicting a ceremony involving witches and Satan. This is exactly the kind of depiction he reproduced all throughout his life to criticize those beliefs. In 1788, Goya painted the meadow of San Isidro, which depicts a popular Spanish pilgrimage. This pilgrimage reappears twice in the black paintings. It's not spiritual and serene, but dark and gloomy. In Men Reading, we can see a book enlightening its readers, perhaps an allusion to the ideas of the Enlightenment which Goya held dear to. 
In Asmodea, the French soldiers which haunted Goya in his 3rd of May 1808 come back with their guns once again pointed at Spanish civilians. They could be seen as refugees running away from the disasters of war. The old men could be a representation of Goya's deafness. The subject of the painting might seem calm and sturdy, but he's isolated by his deafness. Another man is trying to communicate with him. He's yelling, yet the old man stays unaware of his surroundings. La Leocadia seems to be more of a reflection on the pending death of the artist. Leocadia Wes was Goya's maid at the Quinta del Sordo and she followed him to Bordeaux once he left the villa in 1823. Goya would paint her as a milkmaid in France. The fact that Leocadia might have been Goya's lover and that she's depicted here in dark clothes makes it seem like Goya might have painted his own funeral. This would be his own burial mound. Painting your own burial might be the saddest way of expressing your awareness of an incoming death. This finally brings us to Saturn devouring his son. What kind of terrible personal experience did Goya go through for this image to illustrate it? Nerdwriter thought that it could represent Spanish society eating itself or Goya's demons consuming him, but that's not how I see it. I think it's a lot more personal than that. I think Goya sees himself as Saturn. Goya painted himself as the monster. But how can Goya identify himself to this creature, stepping out of the shadows to devour its own child? Saturn was a titan who feared that one of his children would one day overthrow him, so his solution to that problem was to eat them whole, as they were born. Peter Paul Rubens painted this version of the myth a bit more accurately by depicting the victim as a baby and representing Saturn as an evil, power-hungry monster. But Goya didn't paint the victim as a baby. He painted him as a headless, lifeless, mature body. That's terrifying. But perhaps the most disturbing part of this painting is not the pain of the victim, but the pain of the perpetrator, Saturn's pain. That's really what gets me. The sheer panic in Saturn's eyes. He's disgusted by what he's doing. He's in pain. He doesn't want to do it. He doesn't want to eat his own son, but he has to. He doesn't want to die. He doesn't want to be overthrown. But Goya isn't identifying himself to Saturn because they both refused to die. His reason is even more terrifying than that. Only one of Saturn's children wasn't eaten by his father. The five others were consumed. Goya, in his lifetime, had seven children. Only one survived long enough to become an adult. Goya lost six children all throughout his life. Perhaps he felt guilty. Perhaps as he was close to dying, he thought of the legacy he was leaving and how six of his children weren't there to pass it on. He might have felt like a monster. Why was he allowed to live so long but his children weren't. Thank you for watching. This video was requested so many times and I thought, it's Halloween this weekend, so why not make that video? I hope you enjoyed it. I'd like to thank you Design I Write and every other patron for supporting me. If you also want to support the channel, check out patreon.com forward slash the canvas.